Ah, Laszlo, how are you? Very good. Hello, David. How are you? Good. It was a busy day for us. It was a beautiful day. We could harvest um, a lot of um, asu berries, asu grapes. So we, oh, nice. We have just started the, uh, the second selection, the second passage in, in our vineyard. And we had a lovely day, uh, sunny, uh, like 70 Fahrenheit. And, um, wow. So it's, it's, it's promising, 2020. So 2020, at least good for, uh, for Tokai, uh, Tokai. So uh, how many passes? So you're, you're doing harvest right now. So you've already harvested the dry wines, correct? For the, the wines for the dry uh, formats? Exactly. We, we harvested grapes for dry wine um, uh, to the second half of September. Okay. Um, so it was around the, uh, the, the 20, 23rd, 24th of September. Um, Formint is a late ripening variety. So it, it ripens much later than, than uh, Chardonnay or Sauvignon or, or the most uh, regular grapes. And um, uh, so we have to wait until the formin becomes completely ripe because it's a variety with a lot of acidity, which is great in sweet wines. Right, of course. Which is also great in dry wine, but if, if, we, if you pick it too early, the acidity uh, can be very right. harsh and very, yeah. very green. So, so now you're on to the asu, uh, the hand harvesting. Is it, is, is it berry by berry or bunch by bunch, or how do you normally yeah. do it? Yeah, exactly. So everything is, everything is hand harvested here, even the grapes for dry wine. And even, even the grapes that we harvest for dry wine should be uh, a selection, because the moment when we start to harvest dry wine, we already have some botrytis. Right. So uh, we, have to, we only select bunches, Clusters without botrytis, so it's right. it's it's the first selection. And and now I, I can sh I can I can show you. I don't know if you can if you can see this. Uh, so yeah. these are the um, these are the asu berries. Oh, that's amazing. The um, the very uh, you know, <laughs> the, yeah very tiny, and you can you can see that it's um, it's not just botrytised, but it's completely. Dried, shriveled. It looks like 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 really like raisins. Yeah, literally. So it's. Um, the, I don't know if you if you um, if you have ever seen uh, botrytis affected berries from from other wine regions. No, I haven't. But been most of yeah. most of them, for example, in Sautern, they are they have more juice inside. Right. They have not, probably have more uh, bot botrytis, but they have more juice, and not as dried. As those in in Tokai, so this is this is what we use for for the um, for the Tokayasu. That's it's amazing. We're going to get into it here momentarily about how complicated a process it is to make these Tokai wines. So before we get into that, we'll just give people maybe one more minute to connect. Um, how many passes through the vineyard do you usually do in Asu? Harvesting. You, you just said you're going through the second time. Will you do a third or a fourth? Yeah, I think there will be um, a third time uh, for uh, for some of the best plots for food wind grapes, and and the last picking, which is usually um, the very last picking, which is usually end of October, beginning of November, sometimes even later, sometimes um, the middle of November. It's um, the fourth passage when we we cut all the clusters and we make a selection of the cluster. So the clusters with botrytis will be used to make the, uh, the late harvest mm -hmm. or the 14, 13. And the clusters uh, with overripe berries, but with, uh, with no botrytis or just a very few botrytis uh, will be used as uh, base must, base wine for the vinification of the, uh, the tokayasu. It's, I will it's explain so the vinification later. So it's 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 a very complex, I know, it's a very complex uh, harvest you know, and, and vinification. Yeah, and I want to go through it a little, in a bit more detail. So let's uh, now that uh, we've got people joining us and more people will join us as we go. I want to do an official introduction. So today, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is our regular Thursday edition of Tutan Live. So for those who are just tuning in for the first time, we do this 
uh, Two Ton Live, Instagram Live, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And we connect and talk with really just interesting people in the wine industry. So uh, winemakers, directors, owners for estates that we represent. And it's really a fascinating way that's really been exciting for us to connect with people like you and get to learn more about the estates that we love and, and sell every day, but get a little bit deeper uh, into the story. So thank you again for joining us today, everyone. We have Laszlo Mazaros. He's the director of Disnoku in Tokai, Hungary. So Laszlo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. Uh, it's really great. And I'm particularly interested to speak with you because, as we mentioned just a moment ago, Tokai is just co it's complicated. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to, to, to get you uh, on with us today and we can kind of demystify it a bit and speak about some of the complexities. So before I hand it over to you to speak about the region and the history, I just wanted to show everyone on a map where we're at. Uh, so it's always nice to look at a map and see where we're where we're speaking about. So today we're in Hungary. So just to the east of Austria, uh, south, south of uh, Slovakia, and north of Serbia there. So right in between. And when we zoom in, it's surprising to a lot of people that Hungary has a really rich, deep history of winemaking. And there's about 22 different appellations and sub-appellations within Hungary. So today we're in the northeast. So you could see in the little light purple section there, pink purple section, Tokai. And that's the region where uh, Laszlo is today with Disnoku. So I'll hand it over to you with that, uh, Laszlo. Tell us a bit about the region, about the history, and, and we'll start with that. Yeah, so very uh, quickly, um, Tokai is, is a very old wine region. And in fact, it's the oldest delimited wine region in the world. As an official wine region, it, its delimitation uh, was made in 1737 well. by a royal decree, and um, and it's it's in fact it's a quite logical delimitation because the borders of the wine region are natural borders. We have the mountains from the north, the river from the east, and the plain uh, from the south, and so we are, as you told, we are northeast of Hungary. We have a continental climate here. It means that we can have, uh, in winter time, we can have sometimes like, uh, almost like, uh, like five Fahrenheit uh, or even, even sometimes less. And it can rise until uh, 90 uh, or even more uh, during summer. So it's, it's a very contrasty um, uh, climate yeah. uh, and quite dry as well. Uh, but we have a microclimate due to the proximity of the, the rivers and the marshlands that makes humidity, that makes uh, morning mist, that emphasizes the development of the noble rat botrytis. So this is very important, the, um, this alteration of uh, misty mornings and, and nice sunny uh, daytimes. Right. Another thing, important thing is, is that it's a volcanic wine region, so we have a volcanic uh, base stone, and this this uh, this sort of saltiness, uh, minerality that you can find in the wines, especially in the dry wines of Tokai, comes from this this volcanic uh, soil. And there is a great diversity of different terroirs, and we have a very old vineyard classification in Tokai as well. So it's um, it's something that that we we uh, we, we care a lot in in Tokai. Uh, a third thing to mention is that Tokai is a wine region uh, with only white grapes. We only, we only have white varieties. And the two most important varieties are the Formint and Hashtagalu. Both are indigenous varieties, lo local varieties. You can find a little bit of Formint in the neighboring countries in Austria, in Slovenia, in Slovakia. But this is, this is not a variety that you can find in, uh, in America or in, in Western yeah. Europe. And the hash level is even more, uh, is even, even more rare. Um, but from these six varieties, we make a very complex wine range. We make dry wines, we make late harvest wines, and we make the, um, the very complex uh, Tokayasu wines. And maybe just a... Uh, another thing about history that, as I mentioned, it's a very old wine region, and it was 
in the 17th, 18th century, it was probably the, uh, one of the world's most prestigious wine regions. It, was the, uh, it made the wine of kings and the king of wines. So Tokayasu was, was known uh, everywhere. But then after the Second World War, we had um, uh, 40 years of uh, communist period in Hungary. Uh, that meant that there was no, no more quality wine, wine making because we made wines, but, but the quality was not an issue. It was mostly about the volumes, the, the quantity. Volume. And, um, and since the, um, the changes in, uh, in the beginning of the 90s, Tokai uh, had a really uh, great comeback. So we had a lot of uh, investors coming here from all around the world, uh, from France, like uh, Axa Milesim from, from Disnoke, uh, from Spain, like Vega Sicilia, from, mm -hmm. from UK, from America. So it became a very diverse wine region. And of course, a lot of local small uh, producers started to, to make uh, great wines. So Tokai is a very lively wine region um, with a lot of uh, styles, with a lot of different, different, um, different producers. I want, to, I want to interrupt you for a half second, just because I think it's important. Uh, I wanted to do a quick pronunciation guide for people just tuning in. <laughs> it's uh, because the Hungarian, you know, the pronunciation is specific. And I feel like myself and a lot of our uh, colleagues maybe even don't know some of the detailed specifics of the pronunciation. So uh, first of all, the estate, the uh, there's uh, there's two little accents at the at the last o, so that's pronounced like a u. So, does doku and, and not does no is the pronunciation of the estates. And then the region is Tokai, so Tokai is the area. But then speaking about a wine coming from Tokai, so uh, like the Asu wines, it has an i at the end, so it's pronounced Tokai e. So the region is Tokai, but the wines are called Tokai e. And the main grape you were speaking of is, uh, is looks like ferment, but actually pronounced formant. So formant as a pronunciation. So I just want to clear that up because even myself as a wine geek, I've been getting a lot of those wrong for all these years. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry, con con continue along. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's... I mean, Hungarian, it, 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 it was, I think, an important uh, mention because Hungar Hungarian is not a language that have any relations with any other European languages. I mean, the closest language to Hungarian is Finnish, but it's, it's oh. already very remote. So it's, not a, it's nothing common with, with, uh, with like Latin languages or German or, or, or Russian. It's right. completely different. So tell us a bit about, uh, so you're speaking about the terroir and, and the soil there. I find it interesting that you were speaking about um, the humidity and that's what causes the, the noble rot. There's only a few places on earth where that works. Sauterne is, uh, of course, another one, but uh, so it only affects part of the grapes, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, um, uh, I mean, making, usually making sweet wine is, is uh, it means that we should, we should um, concentrate the sugars and the acids in the grape and losing water. Right. But I mean, it's and it's a quite. It seems to be quite contradictory that we need some some water, some some rain or some some mist to have uh, this concentration because we need this this fungus which is called the Botrytis botrytis cinerea, which is a quite common fungus that you can find uh, everywhere in the world as a disease of uh, grape or even even tomatoes and everything, but. In, in some special places, like in Tokai, like in Sotern, when the botrytis comes into the, great, into the good moment, it means that when, when we have already ripe, uh, fully ripe berries, uh, the botrytis makes the noble rot, it makes the, the, the skin very thin, um, and, uh, and, and the, the, um, the berry can dehydrate, that can desiccate, and concentrates every flavors, etc. And in the same time, this, this fungus makes uh, the grape create new flavors, um, superior alcohols, glycerols. So it, it, it will create flavors that will remind uh, to, uh, to uh, orange zest, um, uh, orange, uh, citrusy notes, uh, uh, abricots. So very, very pleasant, fruity flavors. 
and it makes because of the glycerol, because of the supery alcohols, it makes uh, wines with a certain weight on the palate. Uh, it, it makes broader wines, and this is this is this is very important. So the botrytis not only allows the, the grape to concentrate, but makes more complexity inside uh, for the flavors and for the uh, for the texture. So we, we, I put up a picture here. I find it fascinating. So different drying stages, you'll make different wines from that. So uh, the azuberries are, are the most dry and the botrytis affected. And then the ones that, correct me if I'm wrong, the ones that don't have botrytis go into the late harvest and the other ones? Yeah, the, the very beginning, without the botrytis at all, it will go for dry wine, of course. And in the middle, it will give to late harvest or... Um, Edes Samorodny, which is our, our, our traditional late harvest category. Mm -hmm. And those at the very end, almost like, like, like raisins, very dried, with practically no juice inside, will go uh, to the Tokayasu. Mm. So the late harvest, will they sometimes have uh, noble rots? Or... Yeah, they, they do have. They do have, but they don't have the same the same concentration right. as the acid grapes. So they, they have botrytis, but, but without the concentration, without the it's very desiccated quality of, uh, of the acid berry. In fact, asu in, uh, in, uh, it's in Hungarian, I mean, in English, it means like something like, like uh, shriveled, dried, mm. uh, dried out, something like this. No, it's, uh, and we were speaking about it when we first connected. I don't know if everyone has joined it at that point, but the harvest is just so manual and so specific. And you go through the vineyards multiple times, two, three, four times, just picking the shriveled berries. Um, yeah. And it's all done by hand, right? I'm going to show them again. So it's all done by hand, but not just by hand for, I mean, for the, the dry wine and for the late harvest, it's picking clusters or part of clusters. But for the, um, the asu berry, it's not just by hand, but it's, it's by berry by berry. So uh, the pickers will select these berries because you can see this, this, this cluster. You can see in the middle these, the same berries I'm showing, yeah. but they are surrounded by regular berries that without botrytis. So we don't pick those, only the very dry ones. And, and it's probably the most labor intensive um, harvest in the world because one picker can pick between um, I don't know uh, I, I, in kilograms it's like eight to ten kilograms of berries per day which is very very low so it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a very time consuming and labor intensive picking wow so much work and then so from there um, the wines are are pressed or let's speak about the dry yeah, no, no. No, so the dry wine is is um, is is made of in a by classic dry wine vinification. So they are pressed. Usually the full mint is pressed whole cluster. We don't you you don't we don't make this stemming, and then our regular dry full mint is um, is vinified uh, in tanks in usually in stainless steel tanks. And um, we also have another dry wine which is called uh, Inspiration, which is oh. a blend of full mint and uh, and hash levelu. Yeah. Which, which, which is fermented uh, in, uh, in oak, oak barrels. Mm. And um, so they have a very slow fermentation. We, we, we experiment different type of fermentation, different, like with, without, sometimes without using um, uh, selected yeast or uh, using also not just saccharomyces, but other type of yeast. And then we had a, a, a few months of um, barrel aging. But usually no new oak, over just a very few new oak. Because of the, the high acidity and the new oak together, it doesn't really work. So if you have lower acidity, the new oak can work. But usually the ferment has really high acidity and, and right. we don't like new oak very much. So this is, this is for, the, um, for the dry wines. And um, for, the, uh, for the late harvest, we have, we have two, two categories. So we have what we call late harvest, which is a very... Uh, fruity, um, uh, really aromatic and, and lovely uh, balanced uh, sweet wine. Love that wine. And then we have a wine called uh, 1413, uh, which is in, in, indeed 
in the in the um, Edes Smorodny appellation. Edes Smorodny is the, the traditional late harvest appellation, and uh, and it's this is the most more complex uh, late harvest with even more potential for um, for bottle aging and uh, very balanced and, uh, and and like a selection from the best late harvest uh, late harvest uh, wines. And then we have, of course, the, 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 the Tokayasu, which has an uh, even more complex, they, they have a very unique vinification. I don't know if, if you want me to talk about right now or... Yeah, let's, so let's talk hmm. about, uh, sure, let's talk about the Asudu okay. and, and the process. So first we have these berries picked one by one, and so they are completely dried. There is no juice inside. So if, if I, I would like to try to, to squeeze some, it, it, would, it would be impossible. So what we do is that we pour these grapes into vats, into bigger vats, and we wait, we wait several weeks, we wait until we have more, more of these grapes. And during, during the storage of the grapes in the vat, we have a little bit of freedom juice, which is a very thick, almost honey-like freedom juice, which is called the Essencia. So this is, this is a 2020 2020 Essencia. I just um, had it from, from the vet. So wow. it has beautiful golden color already, very, uh, very viscous uh, texture, and beautifully um, aromatic, smells like, like quince, like apricot, really, really, really nice. And uh, when we have the majority of our acid berries, when we have um, some, some what we call a base wine or base must, uh, we start the vinification. And the vinification uh, is in fact uh, a skin contact. It means that we mix these very dried uh, noble rat affected berries, the asu berries. We mix them together with a, a fermenting must uh, or a, a wine. And we do a skin contact for a couple of days or, um, uh, or yeah, three, three, three days maximum. And during the skin contact, we are we are making pumping overs, or we are we are stealing the uh, the grapes, and so we have the uh, the maceration, the skin contact together with the uh, the fermentation, and the sugars, the flavors, are extracted from the asuberries into into the base wine, but not just the sugars and the, and the acids and the flavors, but also some 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 tannins. Some, um, some, some, some tenelux that gives the wine a, a very specific uh, structure. And after the skin contact, we, we press these grapes. So these grapes after the skin contact will, uh, will be um, much bigger because they will absorb the wine. Oh. And the pressing is, is, is very, very slow because it's very difficult to press. Sometimes it takes uh, seven, eight hours, sometimes even, even more. So we, we can increase the, the pressure uh, very, very slowly. And it's, it's a very long pressing. And after the pressing, we continue the fermentation in stainless steel or in, a, in an oak barrel until reaching the, um, the alcohol that we would like to, to have. So it means that in this no queue, at the end of the fermentation, we would like to have about 13.5% of alcohol in the wine and uh, depending on the vintage, depending on the, um, the wine, between um, uh, 130 and 180 grams of residue sugar. And at the end of fermentation, uh, the wine is chilled, stabilized, and we age the wines in, um, in underground cellars. So they are cold cellars curved into the, into the rock with high humidity, with, uh, with uh, constant temperature, and we age the wines in, in, in oak barrels, uh, small oak barrels for usually two, two years. So the low the, requires at least 18 months of uh, barrel aging. Right. It is usually two, two years for, for our, our, our wines. It's, it's, it's... I mean, the, the cellars are beautiful, but the, you know, the process and the complexity is just, uh, it's tough to wrap your head around how difficult it is to make these wines. And you can't even make them necessarily every year, correct? If you didn't have a lot of botrytis that year, then might you not make a soup one year? 
in, in this snooker, we have really, um, I think, a, a, a terroir which is perfect to have botrytis and the yeso. So we, we, we can make asu wines from every vintage. But it's, it is true that the majority, the majority of the producers, they don't make it from every vintage. Right. In this snooker, the, the volume can be very variable. In some vintages, we, we can make a lot. In some vintages, we make just a few, um, a few barrels. But, but we, we, we make it from every vintage. And we are probably the only producer in, in, in Tokai to have really a, a, a library collection of, of great Asu wines from 92 until, uh, until today. Wow. There is one missing vintage. Oh, no. Uh, 19... 1919, uh, uh, but this is because it was the, in the end, in the, in the very beginning, and we didn't have the same understanding of to this snow to Tokai. You can you can taste all these vintages. That's so. How what's the oldest Tokai? Um, not necessarily does Noku, but what's the oldest Tokai you've ever had? And, and and describe that to me because it's it's amazing to me how long these wines can age. The oldest one I, 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 I tasted was 1866. Whoa. And, um, and it, was, um, it, was a, it was a very interesting wine. Um, it was almost, the color was almost black. Wow. And, um, and the nose had something almost like, a, like an old cognac, some, some, some uh, mm. vanilla, some, 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 uh, some oaky. Nose together with with plums with with like uh, not not plums but with with like um, uh, the what do you call it the, like prunes, prunes like right. dried dried plums and, and and spiciness and very good acidity and of course wine that it was already over on the pig but it was still enjoyable and and, and, and very interesting and and on this tasting I I also tasted uh, which was very interesting that was I was also tasting wines bottled in New York, for example, because in the 19th century, until, until the, uh, I think until the 1930s, the majority of Tokai wines left the region in barrels and, right. and, uh, and it, it, they went to uh, Poland, to Germany, and people con continued the, the, the aging in, uh, in these towns and they bottled uh, the wines in, in these towns, but also a lot of um, Tokai wines uh, was transported by, uh, by boats, by ships into, into the United States and was sometimes bottled in New York in, in, in American cities. Oh, that's really cool. So I never even knew that history. So yeah, it makes sense. So you, it would ship over on, in a barrel on a ship yeah. and people would and, and, the, and, the, and the reason that people could do it, and it was also the reputation of Tokai, that the wine is very stable because of its high concentration, high acidity, low pH. The wine could resist uh, against the refermentation and was most, more stable than the majority of the, the wines made in, in, in Europe at that time. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and the viscosity and the intensity and the high acid. Um, so I want to speak because uh, we're uh, we're running out of time as as we often do during these. So I have I'm lucky enough to have a bottle of the uh, 2013 Disnoco Tokai, uh, the Asu Six Petonios. Uh, so the Six Petonios is uh, is the top level. So this is uh, so kind of the pinnacle. Um, well, with a, besides the essencia, which is just the uh, the pure essence, which you have right there, but I have the six petonias here, and we have uh, I know in New York uh, and, and throughout the United States we're doing a big focus on the five petonias at the moment. We have really good pricing on it right now. So tell tell me the difference between the five and the six petonias. Yeah, uh, the uh, the petonias is a Hungarian word meaning. Um, uh, baskets in, in English, and this reflects the way the wine was made in, um, in the old times and still today, uh, that, that the, uh, the proportion of these asu berries, dried noborotopic berries, and the base wine was expressed by this number of baskets. So when people mixed five baskets of grapes with one barrel of um, base wine, 
they called it five to ten minutes. It was more or less the same amount of asu berries as base wine. It was like one to one in, okay, in volume. And a six putanyash was a wine with more asu berries, more baskets of asu berries than, than five putanyash. And it means that the wine was even uh, more concentrated, richer, and more complex. But in, for this smoker, uh, it's not just the, the concentration, not just the residue sugar. But when we, when we make a six putanyash, we it's a selection from, from the best uh, the best parcels, the best the best plots. So for the five putanyash is the yeah, it's, I would say it's, um, it's a perfectly balanced wine. This is really reflects the, uh, the quality of Disnoke wines from, from one uh, particular vintage. And the six putanyosh that we don't make from every vintage is, is a sort of super selection. And, and the, the wine is, is that you, we have, I have the same now in, in, my, in my glass, is, is a 2013 uh, six putanyosh, which is the current, current vintage. And you see the color is beautiful, gold, and uh, and the nose has like this, this. I was talking about the citrusy, very fresh, apricot, um, fruity, fruity nose, with a lot of freshness, and the palate is the palate is rich, textured, but has this this beautiful acidity, not aggressive but ripe acidity, that that gives the the wine a a line, a focus, and um, the finish is long, but it doesn't doesn't taste very sweet. Even if it's a rich wine, it doesn't. You, you, it's not overhandedly sweet. You, the finish is almost like a, like a little bit. We have a beautifully uh, elegant bitterness, with acidity, and almost almost like a dry finish. Yeah, it's all it's, a, and, it's such a clean finish. It's it's it, it's so surprising because the balance is just perfect. And I think this is really. The variety, the forming. This is the climate. This is this continental climate. This is the volcanic terroir. But also, this is the style of this noke because this noke uh, in Tokai it is known as as a as a producer making very pure wines with, uh, with very fresh acidity, balanced wine. So we 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 are not we are not uh, looking for very super. Uh, sweet wines. This is not, not the goal. So the goal is to make wine that you can enjoy, uh, not just with desserts, but also with, with, uh, with the cheese, with, with pâtés, with, uh, with uh, um, uh, um, uh, like maybe a, an oriental, spicy, spicy food. And, and you, you can just, you, you can enjoy it, not just um, a glass, but you can, you can really drink it as you can, you can drink a good wine. It's uh, it's complex, it's rich, but not heavy. It's the, this, is, this is really the uh, important thing. It's not heavy at all, and it's just so well mm -hmm. balanced. Uh, and the five petonias as well is just, it's a rock star. And for the price, that wine is, is, is really a pretty unbelievable. It's, uh, and like you said, I, I, I like to mention that, that it's not just for desserts. You can definitely have this as, uh, even as an aperitif or as a, you know, after a meal, but also with cheeses, with you know, even charcuterie and, and Tarts, it's it's really delicious. Um, I so we're running out of time, but before we do, I wanted you to give us a quick explanation for the changes to the rules for the Petonio system. So I know in 2013 there were some changes. So tell us just a bit about what that means. That means that that um, this Petonio number is no more mandatory to to mention on the label. Okay. You can just uh, release your wine as Tokayasu without this potential number, but you should have at least 120 grams of residue sugar in the wine. Okay. And, uh, but you can still use five and six putanyosh, but we used to have three and four putanyosh with, li with the lighter concentration, but these categories, these concentration disappeared. So um, either you have a wine that you call Tokayasu, uh, you can call it Tokayasu five putanyosh or six putanyosh, but for six putanyosh, you should have a higher concentration of sugar. Mm -hmm. So people, I mean, the producers of Tokai thought that it will simplify um, this category. I'm not sure that it, it happens, <laughs> but uh, we, we like this, these numbers because I think it's a good indication for customers. And also when people ask it, what is it? Uh, we can explain the whole, whole method, the whole 
vinification method. So it, it explains how the wines were made, but how, and also how the wines is made today. So I think it's a, it's a good, good tool. Well, no, I agree. It's, it, it keeps the quality high, right? So if, it, mm. if, there's a, if there is a Petonio designation, then it's going to be top quality. And otherwise, you can declassify it and use it as late harvest or something else. So I agree. It, it's going to raise kind of the quality level and the prestige of, of the name, I assume. Exactly. So tell us just, uh, we were speaking just in the beginning. So as we close out here, tell us what the, what the 2020 vintage uh, is looking like so far. It's, um, it, 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 it started as a very difficult vintage because um, um, we had a lot of rain during summer. It was a cool, cooler summer and the berries were quite big in the beginning. And, and at the end of August, I was not optimistic at all. So I, I, I thought it would be a, uh, I would really um, a not very good vintage. But then we had a beautiful September. And by the, the second half of September, we could harvest very balanced grapes for dry wine. So I'm, 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 I'm very happy with the dry wines. It, it, will, it will be not a great vintage. I think it will be not like vintage like maybe like 2019 or, um, or 18, but it can be a very good vintage. And now we have uh, the second generation of botrytis, which is really promising because the, the botrytis comes um, very ripe grapes and it, it's, it develops very slowly and uh, it's very tasty. And uh, I think we, we, we will make some, some really great wines from the second um, selection of uh, botrytis berries. Nice. Well, you said you're, you're, you're lucky there at Desnoco. You have you know, pretty much perfect conditions every year for botrytis. It's just uh, if, if, if the rain and everything else cooperates, so. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's you know, this Noke is a single, it's a single block of vineyard. So it's, it's one, it's like 250 acres in one, one single block. And in the old books, um, it was presented as the ideal location to produce Asu berry. Because we have, we have a, a warm, uh, beautifully warm uh, slope uh, opening directly to the plain, and we have we have the morning mist, morning mist coming from the plain. So until right now, until uh, eight nine o'clock, it's it's quite quite misty, quite humid, and and then because the the, the estate is open from from the south, from the from the west, from the east, we have some some winds, we have some breezes. Uh, usually, we have beautiful um, uh, Indian summer uh, mm. from end of September, October. And this, this combination of misty mornings and, and, and sunny, a little bit windy uh, daytime weather uh, gives perfectly um, concentrated and, 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 and dried, dried acid berries. So for us, uh, the most uh, difficult period of the harvest is, is right now. So we have just right. started the second uh, tree, second selection, and uh, we, we are looking forward to um, a long vinification process, which will uh, uh, end uh, beginning of December, sometimes, wow. sometimes the middle of December. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I, I know I learned a lot and it's it just, and even though I, I know Tokai and Tokai a bit, um, it, it's, it's like we were talking about, it's just such a complex in-depth process. It's. It's something that I think we could continue to talk for another half hour, an hour, and still not cover it all. So, um, but I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Laszlo. It was, it was really insightful and, and great to you know see the berries in person and, and, and the 2020 uh, Essencia. Um, this is very cool. So thank you so much for your time. And I know it's 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 late there in Hungary, but uh, but uh, thank you for uh, for the time. It was uh, really educational. Thank you very much for the, the for everything the, and um, enjoy your enjoy your six pretenders. Absolutely, <laughs> I'm out in, I'm out in the West Coast, so it'll be the rest okay. of my breakfast here. So it's the okay. best breakfast I've had all year. <laughs> it so. will g give you a good good start for morning. Yeah, exactly. Give me a shot, and I'll uh, I'll be working uh, typing faster than ever here shortly. So, um, but uh, thank you again, and uh, it's just such an honor uh, at Tuton to represent Desnoku and. Um, we uh, look forward to visiting you in, in person, hopefully 
next year. So yeah, it's, it's 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 a very it's really a beautiful wine region to visit as well. So I'm yeah, I've never been to Hungary and I need to get there. So um, for now, we're going to sign off. But thank you again and uh, thank you. Cheers! Thank you so much, Lazo. Have a great rest of the bye -bye. evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.